On today's episode of Homeworthy, we're taking you inside Gary McBorney and Bill Richards' incredible Oceanside escape on the island of Nantucket. Together, they have transformed what was once an unassuming and neglected boat shed into a breezy summer home perfect for entertaining, drawing inspiration from the island's captivating natural beauty and rich architectural heritage. Bill and Gary infused the space with a delightful nautical flair. Enjoy! But first, a big thank you to Kenneth Lynch & Sons for sponsoring today's Homeworthy episode. For almost 100 years, this celebrated company has created beautiful furniture for classic outdoor living, for the garden, the veranda, and the penthouse. With all of their products handcrafted in New England, Kenneth Lynch & Sons is known for fine craftsmanship, attention to detail, and quality that will be enjoyed for generations. Their elegant outdoor furniture and timeless garden ornamentation can be found in country homes and coastal cottages, from Palm Beach estates to New York City penthouses, and will enhance all of your outdoor entertaining and daily living. And their work goes beyond private homes. They have a storied history as the premier manufacturer of the iconic benches in New York City's Central Park. For your next outdoor project, they have many styles and customization options to choose from. And whether you're a designer or a homeowner, their team will work with you to turn your vision into reality. Find ideas and inspiration for your next outdoor living project in their new catalog by visiting klynchandsons.com slash homeworthy. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hello, Homeworthy. I'm Gary. And I'm Bill. Welcome to our home on Nantucket. Come on in. This is Gary McBurney. Welcome to our home in Nantucket, which we have named The Cottage. And uh, we are a little island out to sea. I don't think you were supposed to do that part. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary McBurney. Uh, welcome to our home on Nantucket, which we have named The Cottage. Hi, I'm Bill Richards. Nantucket's a small, quaint island 30 miles off the coast of Massachusetts in some place that we're lucky enough to call home. This house is approximately 4,000 square feet. There are uh, four bedrooms, one on the main floor, two on the level, and the master or the primary is up in the crow's nest, which we like to call it, which affords great views. This house didn't start off as a, a residence. It was a um, basically a boat shed or boat house. It's up, for, it's up from the beach, so it's I, probably more of a boat shed which is why it's tall um, and has the uh, sort of cupola space on top. The, um, the boats would, you know, come in and fill up the space um, vertically. And when we saw the, when we found the house, it was, had been um, changed into a, a guest house back in like 2000 and uh, was very rustic. And um, we set off to, you know, make it our home. It was very much like a, a mountain cabin, which felt very much out of place, especially, you know, New England, you know, coastal situation. Well, but, yeah, <laughs> it wasn't I, I, when we first saw the house, I was definitely not attracted to this 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 property. It was uh, it was pretty bleak, and um, it, it, like Bill said, it looked like a mountain a mountain lodge. Um, I could not see myself in it. I like light you know, bright spaces because it had originally been a boat shed or a boat house. There were very few windows, um, which we had to add. Um, so I, it was not love at first sight for me. Bill, on the other he hand. He saw problems, uh, I saw possibilities. <laughs> and lots of white paint. Yeah, lots of white paint. And uh, addition of lots of windows. Welcome to our covered porch, which also serves as our entry for friends and family. Covered porches play a big part in most of the homes that we do, as covered porches on Nantucket serve as another room, uh, extension of the living room, the kitchen, whatever it might be. In this case, let me show you what we have here. We actually have a living room and a dining room um, that we've developed. Um, we wanted to carry sort of a, 
uh, casual, almost 1930s, 1940s feel in here. So we use this bamboo and rattan furniture. Uh, the furniture is covered with a uh, perennials rough and rowdy fabric in a wonderful blue. And to complement that blue, used our uh, own Gary McBurney home fabric for the pillows. The uh, red poppy fabric and the what we call the Shakamo stripe. You'll notice the lamps on the end tables, which are kind of fun. They're vintage um, oyster shell lamps. They're handmade by a um, woman somewhere like in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, we bought them a number of years ago, and you know, despite the fact that the outdoor, that the shades are not outdoor shades, uh, we make them work. You know, once or twice a year, we spray them with bathroom cleaner, and believe it or not, that does the trick. The blue theme. Um, Really, it's an extension of uh, what we did on the inside. If you'll notice the blue and red, it's very similar to the blue and reds that we used in the living room. So it really does keep the uh, porch feeling like an extension rather than a separate building or whatever it might be. So the table, um, the table is set with um, pieces of dinnerware that uh, we purchased at, during COVID at auction. Uh, COVID was a time when the house was being built and because we're actually staying at it in the garage apartment at an adjacent property, we had a lot of time on our hands. So my fingers were very nimble and I bid on a lot of things that are now stored in the cabinets and on the table here. The, um, these little glasses here, it's made by a company called Atlas. Uh, very collectible, you know, sort of a 1930s sort of wonderful blue glass with sailboats. We have some tarlow glasses with little sailors on them, which are kind of fun. The anchor plates are from a company called Coscada, and the owner of the company has Nantucket roots, and she's always been very generous in uh, donating auctions to our silent auction for Nantucket by design. The silverware on the table was found in Ilse La Sorga at a street market. Uh, it's old restaurant silverware, and you know, they all have different markings on them. The glasses, you know, another Massachusetts or uh, New England company, Simon Pierce, favorite of ours. The dinnerware, we have a collection of spode here. Uh, we have a Fitzhugh, and then we have a uh, blue clipper that work nicely together. We like to, we like to mix and match dinnerware. Uh, we have a large collection of napkins and napkin rings when uh, guests come to our home and um, you know, they want an experience. So Gary and I happily indulge them uh, with different things that come from our inventory. Well, that's the both of us love gardens. And um, you know, surrounding the, uh, the structure, we have a lot of Russian sage, uh, which is really nice. People often mistake it for lavender, but a different kind of flower. And especially at this time of year, it has a lot of height and a lot of movement. And one of the things we did install, which is, makes this room very versatile, is we do have heaters. They're uh, done in a white, they're a, it's a white uh, sort of fabrication, so they don't really stand out. But they do take the chill off, especially at the beginning of the season and the end of the season. Uh, really extends the use of the room. We've also, uh, we're fortunate enough with the gardens that we do have, is that rather than um, head to the farm or wherever we might go for flowers at other times of year, we can pretty much go out into the yard and you know, just with a pair of scissors and create little bouquets like this, or we have a larger bouquet over here of hydrangeas. Um, this, this was a very long season for hydrangea, and we did plant different varieties, which you know, they, they bloom at different times. But even at you know, the end of summer here, we still have a lovely bouquet. Now I'd like to introduce you to the interior of the home, so if you'd follow me in. Welcome to our great room. This room is actually a combination living room, dining room. It's right off the main entry, a very welcoming space when you first come into the house. When we first looked at this house, it looked nothing like this room that you're seeing right here. Um, the beams were actually, everything in here was like orange wood, but the, the two support beams were, had a second pair behind them but they weren't actually beams. They were actually stripped trees with the root splay actually cut into the floor. So with the wood floor, the wood ceiling, the trees, it very much felt like it was a set, a set from The Hobbit. It, it was a little, little bit on the eccentric side. Further, uh, the fireplace uh, here was all in stone, which made for a very heavy look. Again, it, it took the look of a mountain house, a uh, very out of place in this beautiful seaside location. The front part of the room was actually a kitchen as well as a dining room. Uh, we set, after we played with the house, we actually moved the kitchen into a, one of the wing, two wings on the house. But the kitchen originally, we had one half on one wall, one half on the other wall. And the thing that was really odd was 
the sink was on this wall, but the stove was over there. And the span of the room, as you can see, is quite large. So in the event there was any sort of fire or mishap or whatever, you know, the distance was ridiculous. So one of the first things we did do was we took away the, the trees that had been here. We replaced the two in the front with actual beams. The other two proved to be decorative and not of a supportive nature, so that was great. It created more room and what we use as the living space. Took the sofa a bit more away from the fireplace, which was great. We closed up the entry to the bedroom, which had been there. It sort of mirrored the one on this side and opened up the kitchen, which is over, on, over there. When designing a great room such as this, one of the challenges is how to effectively use the space. It's very easy to sort of put your furniture almost more on the perimeter of the room and then the room just feels overly large and you're not really making the best use of the space. In the case of this room, we wanted a distinct dining room and a separate living room. So we did that in two ways. The columns obviously provided a natural division, but then to reinforce that, we have a carpet here as well as another carpet in that room. And then further separating, we have a console. So today it pretty much looks as a console, but if we were having a dinner party, this very often serves as more of a um, buffet or a serving table. The light fixtures also help reinforce the distinction as well. Clearly this very large brass chandelier says that this part of the room is a dining room and the lantern you know, by the fireplace you know, just identifies that as a separate living space as well. I started out in the industry, um, well, to go, to go in the Wayback Machine, when I went to school, I, I, I studied painting and um, I thought I was going to become a, you know, an artist, which, you know, after then studying art history after that, I realized I was never going to be a great painter. So I went on to design He's school. Painter. He's a good painter. Though. I'm a decent painter, but I'm not, you know, I wasn't going to make a living at it. And I studied art history, graduated from that with, you know, and um, decided, you know, now what do I do? I'm not, I don't really want to work in a museum and I, I'm not going to, you know, or a gallery. Um, so I decided to well, give, you know, to start doing interior design, went back to school, worked for a designer in Boston for uh, 11 years, Richard Fitzgerald, and then started my own company in 1993. My path did not start with interior design. I spent about 30 years um, in the world of commercial insurance and risk management, focusing primarily on high tech and life sciences companies, which Massachusetts was a great place for that at the time. Um, Which means I, my company now has the most incredible insurance. <laughs> so, it may or may not be true, but... <laughs> Decorating our own spaces is a funny thing. I am... A, most, a lot of designers love decorating their own houses. I hate decorating my own house. Um, it's just it's just too much pressure on me to, to, to make a decision it's because like the equivalent of writer's block. It's like writer's block. I had there are so many so many choices out there. I can do that for clients. I cannot do it for myself. Um, it's very difficult. So Bill usually I'm the boss in the office. Bill's the boss at home, and uh, he's not the boss of me. <laughs> he's never going to be the boss of me either. So anyway, but I I give him total reign to, to have his own opinion and, and come up with ideas. I, I I actually he becomes like a client, and I I present schemes to him and um and my generally say you can do better than this I've yeah seen, yeah better. that's usually what he says at the beginning um so it, it takes us a little while to get there but he um he, he beca becomes the client and i'm his, his designer and that's generally um how it works we started i think with this piece of furniture i think this was the first piece we bought for the house it's an italian uh desk that um we, we bought it at Casa Gusto in um, West Palm Beach. Um, it, it's a, we, we store candles and linens and things like that, and it's also a good, a good casual bar. I work here um, on my iPad, um, you know, on Zoom meetings, and, you know, it's also very easy to mix a martini at the same time. These chairs we also got at Casa Gusto, and uh, they're George II chairs. Um, we went into the shop. They were, you know, they weren't inexpensive. We we saw them. We we just, it's like if we don't buy these now, it's no time to think because somebody else is going to want them. And the funny thing is, is um, I think three of our friends had seen the chairs also and were really annoyed with us when we had got them instead of them. Tables, a new table. We wanted, you know, I I don't always love tables that that um, expand, so I wanted one big table. Uh, we we can serve, you know, we can have ten people at this table. Um, you know, we can bring in ball chair, ballroom chairs and have, you know, 14, 16. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, very practical. I liked, 
I like it in white to contrast to the brown furniture. I'm still a brown furniture fan, which I know is you know hasn't been in fashion um, for years, but I, I kind of like the mix of things. I like antiques, um, and I like the way new things look with them. Um, this cabinet um, is a is a German cabinet that we, we bought. We co you know, we collect everything blue and white is is good for me. So um, this is um, this is our latest collection. This is one of Bill's things that he uh, he bought on auction during uh, during COVID. You know, it's, it, we have a mix of things. It's English, it's Chinese, it's uh, some Japanese in here, I think, too. I love, you know, I love anything like kind of transferware like this, uh, the, you know, the, um, the Coalport uh, Lions are a favorite of mine. I love the mottled sort of uh, lapis feeling, snuff bottles. Snuff bottles are uh, little bottles that would hold snuff back in the 17th, 18th century into the 19th. Um, I like anything basket, any kind of porcelain basket I love. Um, this one's a, a, a favorite. We're, Bill and I are big fans of anything made in Nantucket. Um, the big industry here forever is uh, making of um, baskets, um, Nantucket light ship baskets. Uh, big fans of those. There used to be a separate um, basket museum here in Nantucket, but that, that's been absorbed into the um, Historical Association, which has an amazing collection. Um, so baskets are good. We love um, Sailor Valentines, which the uh, story used to be that the, the sailors made them for their loved ones while they were on the boats, which sounds great, but they, they usually were made in the islands somewhere in Polynesia or something like that and, um, and brought here, brought, brought home for them. Um, Bill has never met a box he didn't like. He loves boxes. A uh, ship model from a friend gave me his birthday gift probably 25 years ago, our good friend Judy um, Flynn, who uh, love it still, all these years later. Um, big big thing here also is um, purses made out of Nantucket baskets for, um, for women. Um, carry them around at cocktail parties. It's a nice one we get at auction. I you know, just like the form. I love the, the little whale on top. Um, so, uh, that, that's, you know, I, I don't go to cocktail parties with it, but I do, uh, like to display it. The cabinets are great storage. The, be, one of the big challenges for this house, which probably for me was the biggest challenge is because it was a boat shed, there were no closets. I mean, this wasn't designed as a home, so there's no place to store anything. Um, it's, it's been a challenge here. So part of these, the bookcases, which you know, which, which have our Nantucket uh, books and our decorative arts books, which we, we love. Um, but, you know, we are collectors. And, um, you know, you want a flag glass? Just flag glass. How about one with, um, and as Bill mentioned earlier, you know, sailors. So we have all kinds of um, goodies in here that we get along the way. This cabinet has more, you know, more plates and glassware and, yeah, but they're good. They're great storage. They're all around the room. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, we, we kind of like a mix of things. Um, this is a Maison Jansen um, coffee table, which I love. Um, I like, you know, that, that sort of 1960s feeling in the room. Um, the, the, uh, the sofas are very streamlined and, and clean looking. Um, dioramas are a big, a big thing for us to collect. We love um, the feeling of, of those, um, very whimsical. Again, more books, we actually do read them. And uh, one of my happiest things is to come down from my bedroom in the morning and find guests all sitting around the room reading our books. That makes us feel really good. The, um, the ship painting, gouache, is by an art, a French artist, um, or Philippe Conrad. Uh, I've been collecting him for about close to 30 years and bought them originally in, in Paris, the flea market. And this one had been at Ralph Lauren on Newbury Street in Boston. And um, it came up for auction um, a few years ago and uh, I grabbed it. So I'm very happy to have it. Spy glasses, you know, sailor spy glasses, ahoy, um, are great. We got together sometime around uh, in the early 2000s and uh, our careers were very uh, different. and. We spent a lot of time away from each other, and at a certain point, we decided that if we were going to continue on in our relationship, something had to change in the dynamic. So 
because his name was on the door, it was much easier for me to change careers. And I had always believed in a second career, so this was a wonderful impetus to make that happen. Uh, when it first started, you know, we decided to do a book. And the book became my training ground because we took a number of projects that he had done. And my job was to write a story for every project and then every picture needed a caption. So it was constantly, why, why, why? Um, and we were, during Hurricane Sandy, we were holed up in a hotel um, in lower Manhattan uh, with, there was very little food around. Um, so I think we had a bottle of vodka and some instant oatmeal to and, survive And Sandy. a few, a few bottles of red wine. And with my foot basically on his chest asking why and plying him with vodka, we wrote the book. <laughs> It's provided me a great design background and a great way to get into his head and figure out, you know, how and why our projects happen the way they do. We actually we met at a um, at a friend's birthday party uh, 22 years ago now, um, his 50th birthday party. We, you know, it was like one of those crazy evenings when you meet somebody and you know it's like you spend the rest of the night talking to one another and you know it's like okay he's in my head now. Um, and uh, it, it was, it was, it's been a good journey. But, but Bill actually had, we had connections from um, years before that, probably 10 or, or more years before that, because Bill, almost 20. It, almost 20 years ago, he actually did back to insurance. He had done the insurance on our house outside of Boston, my house outside of Boston, um, which I hadn't never connected. Met, never I hadn't met connected the dots and we, uh, we had never met. So, uh, we're sounding a little best in show. We are sounding a little best in show, <laughs> which is scary. The two of us both set foot on the island, uh, you know, over 30 years ago, and I think we both felt the same way. We just fell in love with the place. Um, it's a sandbar island, so the topography is rather flat. It's not uh, like some of the other islands, more of a rock-based island. We have, you know, change or whatever, very flat island. Um, dune grasses, blue skies, sand, sand in, under your feet, uh, rich in history. Uh, Everybody knows about the whaling history, but it goes way beyond that. There was an actor's colony here in the 20s. There was um, attempts at farming. Um, there's a, a very strong female history here because when the men were off at sea, the women basically ran the shops and did all that kind of stuff. Um, really, just it, it's all, I find it enchanting. And there's am amazing architecture. Um, you know, this was, Nantucket was one of the wealthiest towns in the country up until the 18, what, 60s? Yeah. Um, so the architecture is quite beautiful. Beautiful colonial architecture, federalist architecture, Victorian, um, cobblestone streets, lamp lights, or, or gas lights. Um, it's, it's, that's what I fell in love with when I first came here. And also, it's a, um, a gardener's paradise. The, uh, the air here and the sunlight and is just perfect for gardening. Well, which, it's a gardener's really paradise like. if you don't account for all the deer. Well, the deer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our house Which spends three quarters challenge. of the year with deer fencing around it yeah. to protect it for the summer. Uh, now let me show you our main guest room. The funny thing about this room is that uh, it's a collection of a lot of things that we've had in many of our houses over the years. Uh, the John Robeshaw fabric, which we love, I like that, the, the sort of Indian hand-blocked feel of it, um, has been with us for um, I think three or four houses. Um, the headboard was in our, the bed was in our last house, the, the, the quilt I've had for probably 25 years. Um, the nightstands were in our first apartment in New York. So it's, you know, the, the chairs in the room, side chairs were in my mother's cottage in my, our last house. So it's a real mixture of, of, of things. Um, I, I like the, um, I, I love this Laurel Piano sisal carpet. It's, it just has a nice crunchy good feel to me. Um, the paintings are an Italian artist who, um, we, we had in our last house. Um, they seemed really big in that house. The ceilings were very low. It was a very mid-century house here in the island, one of the few. And um, they, they fit perfectly here. They have a little more height, which is good. Oh, and um, funny, funny enough is that the designer's home is never done. We are uh, still missing a large mirror over our, uh, our, our chest of drawers that uh, someday we will, we will find. Also, um, these... Um, Another favorite of mine are these marbles, which I've been collecting since I was a little kid. These are actually my marbles from when I was probably 10 years old. That a couple of extra ones have been tossed in over the year. I put in this little picket fence basket. Of course, you have to have a whale. Uh, 
Christopher Spissmiller, who we love. Interesting thing here behind the bed also is the the, the windows where it, we, we added all the windows, uh, a lot of the windows to the house, uh, a lot in this room, to add a, a, a nice bright feeling. And um, uh, you, you feel like you're in a garden when you're in bed. But the where the windows needed to be placed uh, was awkward with the headboard. The headboard ha hung over the over the window, so we put the, the curtains across the bed to kind of unite unite the wall. And now Bill is going to show you the last room on the main level of the house, which is our kitchen. Well, you've heard us speak about how much entertaining we like to do. Well, none of that would be possible without this wonderful kitchen. As we enter it, you'll notice that the kitchen is dominated by this large blue island and then topped with a pot rack from Ann Morris. The island has a marble countertop, which people may not want to use because it's so susceptible to staining, but it's a Vermont marble that we love. Once a year, we bring someone in to clean it up and it works for us. As far as the other features of the island, we decided to add these turn legs to give it a, a bit of a nautical feel and spirit of the rest of the house. Then we employed the services of a local decorative painter, Deirdre Mannix, to give it this wonderful character. She applied layers of paint and glaze to give it sort of a worn antiqued look and I just love the color. The glass knobs also add a little bit of a reflective touch uh, and also it gives it a sense of age, I think. When people talk about painting their islands, is it should they be the same color as the cabinets or a different color of the cabinets? And as a general rule, we kind of look at the size of the space. In a smaller kitchen, uh, an island painted the same color as the cabinets may work better and make, make the space feel larger. But in a space like this where it is a bit oversized, the contrasting color really uh, gives the island some personality and gives the kitchen a little personality as well. These lovely uh, sunflowers, that's hard to miss as well, are from a local farm uh, just down the street, Moore's End Farm. We watched them growing in the fields and uh, yeah, it was impossible not to stop the car and just pick up a bunch and throw them in this uh, old crock that we have. Another feature I'd like to tell you about in the kitchen uh, involves this sofa. Many times in a kitchen with a window like this, you'll find that the architect or builder wants to put a window seat in. Personally, I've never met a window seat that I find very comfortable. And typically they're against a window, so your pillow and back are leaning against the window, which feels somewhat awkward. So what we decided to do was take this mid-century Danish sofa covered in this wonderful linen that we found from a shop in uh, West Palm Beach, Faustina Pace, and uh, put the sofa in the kitchen. People initially thought it was a little bit strange but almost everybody who wanders in this kitchen at some point within the first 30 minutes is seated at that and usually with a glass of wine in their hand. So I've told you about how wonderful this kitchen is. Uh, Gary's actually the chef in the house. Uh, I do some baking, which I started primarily during COVID with this, you know, the classic sourdough starter that everyone was using at the time. And believe it or not, let me show you what I have here. I actually have some sourdough ready to bake off for tomorrow's dinner. I've kept the actual starter since you know, 2020, uh, so it's very active. So another tip with a kitchen is to place artwork on any of the various wall space that you have. In this case, we had a space aside a, a pantry closet, and we used these great photographs by a local photographer, David Halliday, all nautically themed, so it ties in with the rest of the house. Then additionally, we have a wonderful painting. It's of the uh, Life, Life Saving and Shipwreck Museum, which is actually just down the street. It's by a, a wonderful artist friend of ours named Diane Dicker. And lastly, we have a great collection of reverse glass paintings of ships that um, I can't honestly say I know the provenance. I bought them at auction, but they, you know, they look great in here. And again, just little things you can do to give your kitchen some personality. It's a room where you spend a lot of time, uh, so why not? Typical dinner party for Gary and I on the island uh, would involve fish. We have friends who will tell you that they've probably eaten swordfish here more times than they care to count, but we do serve other types of fish. Generally, we also source local produce um, for dessert. I mean, Gary typically has you know uh, apples, berries, that sort of thing around. He makes a mean uh, fruit cobbler, uh, which you know, we were lucky enough to enjoy one the other evening. Um, and then lots of wine. When I introduced you to our living, and, living room and dining room, I mentioned that the kitchen had been moved into what had been a bedroom. 
Now we're moving into the mudroom, which had also been part of that same initial bedroom. The mudroom was great in this house because, as Gary mentioned, having been a boathouse or utility building, there weren't a lot of, lot of closets. So this gave us an opportunity really to create lots of storage space. It's also a nice place when you first come in, which this is the door we use most of the time. It gives you a place to put your sunglasses, your keys, you know, all those miscellaneous things slot easily into the top drawer. We have an interesting couple of pieces of art here that I'd like to mention. Uh, the top one is by a friend of ours, an artist named Melly Cooper. Melly um, makes these incredible pieces and it's actually made out of pressed paper. She makes a latex mold out of the actual objects that you see. Then she uh, has her own paper pulp and presses it into the mold to make the form. And then she hand paints uh, the designs on the object. Um, incredibly delicate work. The middle picture here is actually a family picture from my side. And I actually have a picture of my grandfather here in 1921. And for some reason, if he grew up in Salem, Massachusetts, they put all the boys in the photograph in sailor's hats, which is very apropos in the house. And now the weather instruments, you know, this was something I had to have. Um, we like to kayak and uh, do those sort of water activities. So I have the, gate, the guides here that will always tell me whether it's high tide, low tide, whether or not it's too windy, whatever it might be. So very, very fun to have around. Many of the things in the house have come from auction. And what I haven't mentioned to date is there's a big auction house on the island uh, called Raffaella Sona. I picked up this little curiosity piece several years ago. And if you take a close look, it's actually real estate ads from years ago. And at one point, it was a listing for a little house in Wisconsin for $8,500. So we do know this is definitely from days gone by. We covered the walls in this space with a um, beautifully colored uh, raffia wallpaper from Philip Jeffries. Um, because we, again, we have so much white in the house, this sort of um, adds some warmth, especially to an area that um, it is more kitchen, family oriented, that sort of thing. So we think it works rather, rather well. We do, actually, we have very similar taste. Um, and it, it translates from decoration, but down to our closets. Uh, there are many mornings we come out of the closet not having seen each other till we're dressed and we, one of us is going to no, you can't wear that shirt. Well, I, it, it's just now I put on a check shirt and it turned out he had already taken out a check shirt to put on, but you know, so he had to change. Um, so we, and, and design wise too, we have very similar tastes. I think we both, you know, one of the things that I guess attracted us was to one another was that, um, you know, we, we like any, everything Nantucket, everything nautical, um, you know, we were both from Boston. We, we both have, we both grew up probably 10 miles from one another. Um, so there was, there's a lot of similarities in our life and, um, it, it's, you know, and, and, and back to the clothing thing, it, it, it can get a little scary because we have a lot of the same clothes and, uh, you know, unless we pack together when we're traveling, we could end up with a suitcase of exactly the same things. Except for shoes, I'm a, we have diff totally different taste in shoes. Now I'm gonna bring you up to our crow's nest. Um, along the way, I'm going to uh, show you some artwork on the staircase. Uh, we collect uh, antique, historic things, um, contemporary local artists uh, who, who we have great fondness for, um, beautiful Sailor Valentines, nice woolly, um, there's, a, there's a really nice portrait of a sea captain with his uh, sextant. Um, very handsome guy. Usually they're kind of scary looking. This, this, this guy is uh, somebody you'd, you would you know, like to know. Um, another nice diorama, which uh, very sweet, sweet little one. Also, I'm a big fan of uh, flags. have a nice pair of framed uh, antique, uh, probably from the 1890s or so, flags here. Uh, love our rope handrail. I always try to incorporate one of these in our houses. Uh, just, yeah, nice, nice nautical um, kind of feeling to it. Uh, painting here we got in the south of France about 15 years ago. Don't know who the, the artist was, but uh, the great color. Um, before we get into our bedroom, there is a, uh, a little vestibule uh, and we covered the walls and our, uh, our own uh, whaling flag uh, wallpaper. Uh, done for Gary McBurney home. Um, it's based on actual whaling flags of uh, ships, uh, which is, uh, there's a plaque of them at the uh, Historical Association here on the island. Um, we have this old, this bamboo mannequin, which, I, you know, depending on which house it's in or what season it is, I dress differently. Great uh, Regency bullseye mirror. 
a nice bobbin um, bookcase uh, that again has that ropey kind of feeling we love. So now let's uh, let's go on to the bedroom. Um, so in, when you first walk into our bedroom, you, I think you, you you feel a sense of volume. Um, it's a big room, um, high high ceiling. You know this is where the mast of the ship would have been or the boat, the sailboat. Um, we it, this again was all painted um, or, or urethane um, pine, so it was very orange. We painted the whole thing um, out white. There were iron rods holding it together, which uh, was simplified. Um, the, the structure of the space just feels really nice to us um, when we're in here. The you know the windows open out onto the the water and the sky. Nighttime, morning, it's 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 glorious up here. The bed was uh, was made to fit within this alcove sort of thing that happens with the beams. Um, you know, it tucks tucks in. Uh, and the nightstands, because it tucks into it, the nightstands come forward. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very practical kind of space and it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. Uh, chest was made by uh, Balecki Brothers in New York, custom for us, um, wonderful, um, the wonderful old, old world style, um, Parson style. Um, the, um, the carpet was made by Guinevere in London, uh, nice uh, hand-woven killum. We selected the colors, the teen linens uh, on the bed. Uh, just, just uh, you know, favorite spot of ours, uh, and the beautiful, beautiful ocean right at our right at our feet every morning. So um, we continued the blue and white up through the hallway with the carpet and into the bedroom. But in the bedroom, we added, we added the the red. Um, I'm I'm always been a red fan, and um, I. I had, um, it basically started because I had a pair of antique red glass lamps and uh, they, I wanted them to fit within the blue and white scheme. So that's where I pulled from. Um, I'm also a big um, American flag person. I love anti old American flags, actually any flag. Um, I have my father's flag from his World War II flag um, right next to my bed. And um, great campaign desk, uh, very useful work at and use it as a nightstand bob another bobbin piece uh, the, this one uh, a really cool chair from uh, David Duncan in New York and um, yeah collect it's uh, the the collection of boats and ships continues around the room uh, the best part of uh, the room for me is being is is our little balcony overlooking the water uh, I can get up at night and go out and look at the stars um, it's great when I get up in the morning I just you know open the door and you know, feel the, the breeze coming through. Um, I think my, my favorite part of this house, uh, of this, this home for us, I think our bedroom is probably my, my favorite spot in the house because of its views and um, openness. Um, I'm a person that likes to sleep with blackout curtains and, you know, in the dark. And I've never drawn the curtains here or lowered the shades. Um, it's just wonderful to go to bed at night and have the, you know, the, be able to see the stars and wake up in the morning with the sunlight. It's uh Perfect. I like the bedroom too. We do spend a lot of time up there. As you'll see, it's a very large room that also functions as a quasi office as well. Yeah. But I think this particular space is my favorite. We travel a lot um, for work, and we're uh, you know alone and together quite a bit. And this is definitely communal space. So when we're actually here, we do entertain quite a bit, um, whether it's summertime or wintertime. In wintertime. Uh, there's an event here called Christmas Stroll. We'll invite friends in, we'll have dinner at the ta dining table right over this way, and then we'll gather around here. And uh, in honor of my sister, we do this reading of the, uh, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And it started out after she passed away. It started as something very sort of somber, and it's become very theatrical. And we have a bunch of friends who are really characters and frustrated actors. And everybody just, it all plays out right here in front of the fireplace. And we wear hats and, you know, all, all the goofy stuff that everyone wears at Christmas stroll. Lights around our necks and, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's just, this room has a lot of fun memories. On Nantucket, one of the advantages of a twin guest room is that it provides flexible sleeping arrangements for the many house guests you're sure to have. Now I'd like to show you our outdoor patio. So we were just in the hydrangea guest room, uh, which I mentioned is one of two guest rooms on the lower level. One of the problems with lower level bedrooms is people always feel like this, they're sleeping in the cellar and you get a little pushback about you know, somebody not wanting this or that room. When we designed this house, this space was not here. 
So the initial thought was we would put a window in each, be each bedroom, which meant we would either have a window well or we would dig out a bit um, and just create a little bit of space between the house and, and an outside retaining wall. Well, it turned out that the cost to bump that retaining wall out six feet wasn't much more than if we bumped it out there what, for what you see right now. Uh, what that did was it provided us an opportunity to put French doors out of both bedrooms and it opens onto this really spacious little patio that guests can use for working, making phone calls, you know, just relaxing. Uh, we decided to create the illusion of more space by employing mirror. We did two mirrored panels that are placed directly opposite the French doors. And then as a decorative element, we incorporated this trellis work. And then um, to, to create a little bit of a green space, we put in this climbing hydrangea climbing up the walls. And this year we have geraniums here. One of the um, little pitfalls we had was with the mirror, uh, it reflects, when the sun is at a certain angle, it reflects directly on the plant. And originally there had been ivy there, and the ivy burned. <laughs> so uh, we had a photo shoot here at some point, and we just had some geraniums, so we just stuck them into the ground, and success. So I think we'll be seeing geraniums here for years to come. The space is currently set up into two distinct areas. This end has a sofa with a coffee table, and the end, this end down here uh, has a small dining table. Uh, the inside living room uh, has a little bar attached to it, which we've set up with a little refrigerator and a coffee machine. So guests who are staying on the lower level can get their cup of coffee in the morning, just come out here, enjoy the morning, catch up on emails and so forth. So this spiral staircase not only provides you know, access in the event of an emergency, but it also provides a very beautiful way to access the garden. So when planting this garden, we had to be very um, aware of the fact that we are in a more remote part of the island where there are, are more deer and rabbits. Um, those animals can destroy your garden very quickly. And consequently, despite the fact that we planted as many deer resistant species as possible, we do find that we have deer fencing up for about three quarters of the year. Um, and while you, know, you don't always want to look at deer fence, the value in that is during the summer months, we do have some beautiful hydrangeas blooming and some other flowering plants that we might not otherwise be able to have because they would have been eaten. So now I'd like to take you around to the front of the house. As we approach the front of the house, you'll notice that the garden design becomes a bit more formal. Despite the fact that we are in a casual area, there is a bit, a degree of formality to our lifestyle. So we put in a proper entry gate and then we put a bluestone patio in, which is a great place for cocktails. In the summertime, we're known for putting a tent in this area of the yard, and there's typically a cocktail party right in the bluestone patio. Um, a perfect place to spend a summer evening. So let me take you to the bluestone patio and show you one of the water features that we have. Before we get though, I will point out that uh, we've always been enamored with the rose-covered rose -covered cottages in Sconset. And despite the fact that we do have deer here, the deer fencing has allowed us to at least attempt to have some roses growing over the, over the house. So the bluestone patio area that we wanted, um, as you can see, is rather large. And if it was unbroken, it would start to look like a landing strip. So we decided to incorporate a water feature using an old bowl that Gary had bought in Paris about 30 years ago. Frankly, for 25 of those 30 years, it sat in a storage bin. Uh, so it was a nice opportunity to use that. Um, the water flows into a um, sort of a re recycling pit um, and the plantings around it um, have been a little problematic. The wind, for as much as it looks like the water flow is rather gentle, the wind tends to blow the water in this direction. So the choice of lavender as a surround was, has been sort of a difficult one. On windy days such as today, you'll find that the wind will blow the water often in this direction and the lavender will get wet. We've replaced the lavender in this area several times already. Uh, which some people may say is foolish, but we do like lavender. Earlier, I showed you our friends and family entrance from the interior of the home, but I thought it'd be nice to share with you what our friends actually see when they come to our door. The, most of the plants that you can see are deer resistant species, as I mentioned. You know, we have catmint, um, lots of catmint. We do manage to have some hydrangeas here, different, different species, which is nice as they bloom at different times. And then a circling, the screen porch, we have a beautiful stand of Russian sage. For me, and you know, it's funny, I was thinking about this yesterday, and when I was, when I was a little kid, I used to always say, um, you know, would use the word house, and my mother would always correct me and say, no, it's a home um, that we have. And um, 
You know, I, I think about that a lot, and this house is a collection of things that we both had for many years and bought together, and it's, it's, it's where we have friends, family is always here, our parents have been here with us. Um, yeah, we have uh, you know, dinner parties on a regular basis, so we're always ready to have a, uh, you know, a barbecue and uh, you know invite people in at any in any given second. So that that to me is home. And um, we also didn't want that the house to be a museum. I mean, we, we're major collectors. I'm definitely you know I'm not a minimalist. And, you know, I build maybe more more so than me, but definitely not me. And um, you know, it's all our collection of things, and and that's important. But it's not a museum. It's definitely not a museum. We've bought and sold a lot of properties over the time we've been together, and we're constantly on the road. So I don't think my feeling of home is necessarily tied to a particular structure. I think no matter where you are, um, you can create that feeling. It's pulling in the people that you love, the people that you, you know, you're good friends. Um, it's very easy to pull a meal together somewhere and create that sort of feeling. It's you know the, the right lighting, the right music, which you know very easy to do with phones and technology these days. So I, I think it's more um, who you're with, the environment you create, wherever you are. And uh, I guess I think we've become pretty good at that, I think. Yeah, we're pretty, we're, we're pretty um, adaptable. adaptable and we move around pretty easily. We also tend to like um, a lot of having a lot of the same things in our homes so that um, we know what we have, we know it will work. Well, it's very familiar. Um, it's very familiar. And, um, you know, it all works really well and it's, it's, it's pretty easy as long as you have place settings of China for 24 multiple sets. Well, that, that works for me. Yeah. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.